So, here's my two year review on the um, Honda CRF 300L. As I say, I've had it for two years now. I've done just 2,413 miles. I've ridden it all through winter and all through summer. And I just want to let you know my feelings on this bike. Well, first of all, I bought this bike as a second bike. And its job was to do some um, gentle green lane in off-road riding, especially through the winter. Normally I pack my bike up end of summer and I don't basically get back out on it until early spring. But this bike has allowed me to ride all year round and I have. Damn it. I joined the TRF. I've been out on rides of the weekend with them in all weathers, all through winter, because they don't stop. I'm in the Lanx division and they don't stop riding all year round. Um, I've also been on the KTM Adventure weekend and of course just going out on my own just for bimbles about regardless of whether I've got the heated gloves heated clothing and um, regardless whether it's wind rain snow you can just get out if you've got the right clothing you can get out and enjoy it yeah the roads a little bit wet and slippy but you know it's a light bike so what are my thoughts on it well I absolutely love it when I bought it, I thought, initially, I thought, it's a little bit slow, it's a little bit spongy. Um, but as you grow with it, so does your confidence grow with it as well. Um, first thing that I said I was going to do is in increase the performance and the suspension and do the tyres. Well, I've done pretty much a, a lot of extras apart from those. Yeah, the suspension is a little bit saggy and a little bit soft, but I'm six foot two and I'm 16 stone and I cope with this well. I've done the ACT, the Adventure Country Tracks, I've done green lanes on it. Yeah, it bounces about and pogos a little bit, but it's quite easy when you sat on it to touch the floor and waddle through some of the difficult stages. Now, I'm no expert, I'm a novice, but I enjoy it. Um, and I find it very, very easy to throw around, pick up, if I drop it. The other thing with this bike is as well, is it's absolutely, I can leave it for weeks and weeks and weeks, go to it and it starts, touch of a button. Also, as another positive is sometimes I don't wash it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And sometimes I haven't washed it for months. And then I give it a clean when I pull it out of the garage and it comes up like new and starts first time. As for the performance side of it, once I'd got to about 1500 mile coming up 1800 mile, it really loosened up and at first I was thinking to myself, well this bike's not really going to be quick enough for me for overtaking and, and it is. It goes through the gears. <laughs> I've just come back from uh, Birmingham and I was on the M6 and it's a windy day, it's a clean, nice, sunny day, but it's very, very windy. And I was cruising on the motorway and averaging about 60, 65 mile an hour and sometimes you get behind an HGV and keep it in six and wind it back and it'll ease you up to 80 mile an hour to overtake but it doesn't like to sit in at 8 to mile an hour, it's probably top of its, well, especially with my weight on it. But at 65, 70, it's very, very comfortable and very, very easy. It's a nice upright position, it's nice and light, it's nimble. When you're filtering, you just filter straight through anything, it's quite easy and nimble. Have I mentioned it's nimble? Well, it is. Um, it's also very, very easy to move around, get in the garage, get out the garage, 
Um, as I mentioned, the performance, once it gets about 2,000 miles on the clock, it really, really loosens up. And I don't feel as though I need any more performance for what I do on this bike. If I was going to be cruising and overtaking and racing, then yeah, you'd, you'd do some modifications. But this is not the right bike for that anyway. This is an adventure trail bike uh, to get out and have fun. It spends most of its time doing 20 mile an hour on the lanes. Um, rather than doing 70 mile an hour if you was doing 70 mile an hour on the highways and byways and motorways then you'd probably go and get an adventure bike that's not what this is this is something you can just get out at the weekend or midweek if you're not working and just enjoy so performance not a problem at all Suspension, yeah, I probably will get round to that, and it is a bit of a sag, and when I've got some luggage on here, it does bounce about a little bit. So I probably will, no, I will definitely do the suspension, even though the last two years it's not been a priority. The tyres, you know, they've coped quite well, they're all right on the road, they're all right off-road. They do what they need to do, I've not had any major issues, yeah, there's better tyres out there, but you know i'm a little bit tight as well um i don't think i've needed to spend the money when i could have spent it elsewhere and i'll tell you where i spent it first thing i needed to get it comfortable for my height so i did the bar risers which is the pro taper and i think that's a cr high and again with the pro taper razors as well on there and that's given a really really nice feel not only on road but off road when you stand up um, I did these cheap eBay Amazon mirrors they're just over a tenner and they fold in and fold out like a double take mirror but they've not got the cost and I know they're not gonna have the longevity of a double take mirror but I can buy five pair of these and just bolt them and bolt them back off and if I bend one and break one I'll just buy another one for 10 quid but that was fine the other thing was a screen I went for the L because I don't like the fairing and all the extra that you get on the rally it's not what I wanted but I did need that wind protection so I bought this and again that was £60 off eBay it was actually for a CRF 250L and it bolted straight on to my 300L it was 60 quid and it really, really does keep the wind off you. It really, really does work. Then the other things was bash plate. Aestabis, if that's how you pronounce it, that's how I pronounce it, uh, bash plate. Um, I'm going to be in rocks and there's going to be things throwing up in it and the odd log. So I wanted to present the bottom of the engine. So I fitted that. I'll show you that in the walk round. Um, crash bars, I got them second hand and they was on, somebody was selling them, they sold the CRF and he wasn't giving them any extras for the accessories, so he sold them. They were 35 quid delivered off eBay as well. Protection sorted if you drop it. Bart Busters, well that's a given as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> any hand guards that you're going to get that's going to protect your hands need to be, in my opinion, the Bart Busters absolutely solid double clamped um, worth the weight in gold I've seen cheaper versions they don't work and or they don't last as long or they're there just basically for the odd branch but this will stop your bike from getting broke and your levers getting broke should you drop it who needs more power surprises me every time I get on it a lot of people mention as well about the seat being really really hard I didn't find the seat comfortable at all and after 20 minutes my backside was aching and then I read somewhere on YouTube that somebody said well it's the seat strap it's right across your ass or bottom if you're British and I took it off and what a difference you know it was the seat strap that was digging straight across my derriere that was giving me uncomfortable and numbness so i took it off i did fit a cool seat cover and the reason why i did that is because it gets mucky 
and again it gets a bit sweaty and a bit wet when I'm going out on my trails and my trials so that wasn't an expensive item either that was about 20 quid on eBay see can you see it that's the fairy fella luggage rear rack I fitted um, a CRF 250 L rear rack and it fitted straight on I just had to move two of the holes I had to drill two separate holes in it but it was no biggie um, that was 40 quid again off eBay uh, quad lock mount lock is a must keeping your phone safe and again a little tank bag nothing major just for my wallet a few coins earplugs etc Again, it was something like 15 quid off eBay. It's a Zivi rip-off thing. But it does the job. Yeah, so, I bought this bike, it's the ABS model, two years ago, and I bought it as a cancelled order for 5,500, or five or under that. He did me a low rate finance deal which wasn't worth me putting any part exchange. I think it was something like 3% at Hunts um, in Manchester. And I thought for that price, I'm paying, I think it was something like 600 quid interest over three years. I just financed the full lot. And I've had it for two years. I've had one service on it, which um, after the 600 miles, and that was 95 quid. The rest has just been fuel. Um, as I say, I've had no issues, no problems, no punctures, no leaks, no electricals. It's been absolutely 100% reliable and fun. 110% fun. It's my second bike. My other bike's a Triumph Bonneville. If I'm doing any long distance or cruising, that's the bike of choice that I would use. But it's an everything. And it's a comfy thing, it's a stylish thing. You won't take it off-road, even though it's a scrambler version, I won't take it off-road. I won't like to pick it up. But it's just a style thing, where this is a tool, this is a tool to do that job. But I find myself, even if I'm just going out, I go for this. It's just so easy to just put my hands on and take it out of the garage and get on it and have miles for smiles. So the very, very things that I see people complaining about is the tyres, suspension and them are the two things that I haven't changed. But as I said earlier, I will be changing both. When the tyres need to be done, I'll probably get another 500 miles out of them. And I may either try the trackers or I may try the Dunlop and Pirelli 21s up front. And suspension YSS, there's a, a good deal on at the moment for the back and front suspension and it's set up for my weight, 105 kilos, I'm 100, but it's set up for 105 and I think that's the, uh, the weapon of choice. I will let you know how that goes and how that feels and then I'll be saying to myself, should I have done that earlier? I wish I'd have done that earlier, but at this moment in time, apart from a couple of hundred quid on extras, and protection the bike still owes me what it owes me and I know people can go and spend a fortune but then if you start spending thousands and thousands of pounds you may as well just bought a different bike but for me this is a keeper I've got no reason to sell it there's nothing else there I've tried all the other bikes there's nothing else out there that I feel will work better for me as a second bike and it's a Honda, you know? It's probably still now worth four to four and a half grand in two years. I might have lost 500 quid a year, but look at the fun I've had out of it. And I think when you buy a bike like this, you don't keep it pristine. All the stickers came off, I jet washed it, and the stickers came off and the decals started peeling and looking a bit tatty, so I took them off. He took them off. So what I'll do in a second, I'll park up, I'll let you have a quick look round it, 
and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Would I buy this bike again? Without a shadow of a doubt. In a heartbeat. This replaced my KTM 390 Adventure, which was a phenomenal bike, but it wouldn't do what this thing will do. Well, it probably would, but nowhere near as good. But there's things on this bike that won't do what my KTM 390 Adventure would do. So, there's the bike. AliExpress covers, very, very good. They were about 18 quid. There's the crash bars I mentioned. Jet bat busters, pro taper, handlebars and razors. As you can see the vibration there from a quad lock. So get the damper. Little bag there. But I say sometimes I have not washed this for months. A little bit of surface which will rub off surface rust. I'll get another 500 mile out of them tyres. And there's the rack that I mentioned. You just have to drill that hole. The first hole's there. You have to drill that second one. And that is it. I find these are absolutely brilliant. These were up 15 quid off eBay. I'll tell you your amps, volts, two USBs, and you can switch it off when you're not using it. Yeah, lovely. So, that's enough for me today. My final thoughts is, would I buy it again? Yes, I would buy it again. If you're thinking of one of these, for the money that they cost, go and buy one. If it doesn't work out, there's a massive market for them. A massive market for used ones. In fact, I've seen... Thank you very much. I've seen these bikes, the 250Ls, four or five years old and they're still fetching good money with 20,000 miles on the clock but I know this bike it's my bike I've used and abused it but I've serviced it and I've cherished it can you say cherished it when you just said you've abused it well as you can really. So, thank you very, very much for watching and listening to me. If you like what you've heard or you've got any questions, please put them in the comments. If you'd like to know where I got any of this gear and links, I can put those in the description. If you did like it, please show me a like. If you've got a comment, please put a comment. I answer all of my comments. And please don't forget to subscribe. This is Mike Line Motor. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.